Okay, how are we doing up there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Illuminous 4K Screen Paint using ambient light rejection technology gain. Uh, today, we're going to be doing some demonstrations using my Panasonic projector. Uh, keep in mind, this projector is around, doesn't have sound. Uh, you have to use sound through a different audio source when it comes to this particular, this particular type of projectors. But this projector is a full 1080p projector. It does have a contrast of 16,000 to 1. I didn't get a really chance to put the whole thing in because usually when you stream, they only give you like 60 charters as you type something in. But later on, they'll give you more once to upload it onto the uh, main server. Here's the model number of my projector. It's a PT. Uh, AE2000U, you can look it up. I'll put the specifications directly from Projector Central. Like I said, this projector comes in at around at around um, uh, 1500 lumens. Sorry, yeah, yeah, 1500 lumens, 1600 to one contrast. Now, we made several different forms of cheap screen paint mixes. And in this demonstration, I told you we're doing several forms of demonstration. We have ultra short though, we have laser, We've got just about everything here to get the ball rolling. Now, we're not going to be doing a demonstration downstairs because I don't want to go all polar ice on you. I don't want the sound coming all choppy, but that's the only way we can actually do the mixes. So just to keep, all right, let me make sure I'm on my network. I have several different forms. We've got type A, B, and C. Uh, these were the type of um, gray screen paints we use. It doesn't really make a difference on what you use for your base. It has to be, it can be gray, it can be white. If it's white, you just put in a couple of teaspoons of black. Um, I don't know what I did with the container of black paint. Oh, here it is. Here we go. This is the container of black paint that we used, right? Any kind of black paint, flat black paint doesn't make a difference. You're not going to see it. Whatever you put in this mix, you're not going to see it. Only thing you will see, you will see that Christmas glitter. That's something you will see. Now, this is the glitter that we use. It is, um, I'll put the name of it. We got it over at Lowe's for about seven bucks. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this and the reason why this product is no threat to our technology is because I showed you in the last demonstration, contrast is everything. And you can see even with a 4300 little bit projector that had a 1920 by 1200, all that power, it just was not enough to be able to pull contrast from the screen. And without the contrast, color, everything is just going to fail miserably on, on that screen paint. So this is why I'm showing you how to make it. Now, keep in mind if you make this, don't come back to me complaining the fact that your screen faded out, washed out, your colors are bland, and you ruined your screen. You're making this at your own risk. Like I said, if your color, color and quality on your screen fails you, you're not getting the contrast. Just know if you paint this on your screen, it's at your own risk. All right, let's pop up in Sonic Projector right here. Also, too, before we start this so I don't forget, let me show you. We got the blackout cloths that just came in today for our customers who ordered... The one gallon kit. This is a blackout cloth right here. We have it in canvas, which is a whopping six by nine. This is an art canvas right here. Keep in mind, nice and smooth for painting your screen. And then we have it in black, six by nine. So those of you ordered uh, that kit, tell me why am I dropping leaves or stuff everywhere in the house? Like, come on, man, so why you can't buy your stuff? Anyway, so it's a long, another long story on its own. So this right here is the surface that comes with it. If you don't have a big enough surface to paint on, it comes with the surface for free. Keep in mind, that's a special promotional deal. When that's gone, we remove the blackout cloth. The blackout cloth will not be there. All right, uh, that's basically about it. We got these to take care of. Over here, we have what I have set up upstairs for my gaming screen. Got myself a new keyboard and mouse, so my keyboard was pretty crusty. And remember when I was peeling off the paint tape, if you remember that, I was peeling the paint tape on the screen I just painted upstairs, and some of the paint that was attached to the wall gave away and left these huge white spots on my screen. That's where the paint gave away. So I went over to Lowe's, as I told you before, tore off a little chip of the paint off the wall, scraped it off, took it down there, and they made the exact same color. It's an odd color upstairs. Uh, the, um, the wall I have upstairs to actually coat that in and redo that. And there's my LED lights for my screen at the bottom. So we're going to do that today. We'll get all that in there today. All right, so let's come over here. I'm trying to get myself another Sony Ultra Short Tool Projector. We have the three different forms of screen paint here. We have one that has actually, some have more glitter, some have less. But I told you this stuff will plague your screen like crazy. When I show you what I mean by plague the screen, you see all that glitter popping up on the screen like that? That's what happens when you put glitter and your screen, this is what you get. You get a crisp less, some maybe more. Now the less we put, some we put in less, some we put in more just to show you because some people may want to say, hey, Ken, 
how come you're not putting enough glitter into that screen? I want to see it sparkle. Well, there you go. There's your sparkle effect right there. See all that in your screen? Right up there. And mind the projector we're using is 1600 to 1. I mean 1600 in contrast, and that's what you're going to pull up. Now, our concern here is, like I told you, any light gray screen is going to pull color. It's easy. Any light gray screen is going to pull color. The biggest problem you want to see, what you want to see is contrast. That's what you want to see. This is why we do, when we do black screens, black screens, one of the things I show you, which is most important, is white level. That's why I do white snowstorms and the white foxes and all that crazy stuff. Anything involving white, bright colors. This is something you have to see on a black screen. See those natural colors pull, those white levels pull. You have to be to see that. Same thing when it comes to a gray screen. A gray screen has to show you contrast. What is the difference between multiple shades of gray? Do they have the ability to produce one? Has the ability to produce better contrast than another? So that's what we're going to do in this demonstration. Let me go grab a few things real quick. We'll get back to this real quick. Now, mine. That's why I chose the Panasonic. That's a sixteen hundred to one or two thousand to one contrast. And then I have another one downstairs that has a 10,000 one. Actually, two downstairs that have 10,000 one contrasts. And here, that I need for me to start this demonstration. If I can track down one of them, I'm good. Usually, I can never track down one. I have to go on this wild freaking turkey hunt for just one of them. Just one of them. I wonder if I'd just like to find one of my hats. All right, so. Because it'll make it easier for me be able to pop up. Let me go track one down. Once you look at the screen, get a chance to get a screen because all that's going to get really ugly pretty soon. Let's see if we can track one down. Let me shut my bathroom door here. Since we're going to be upstairs today, Mongo, shut the bathroom door. Shut the freaking door. All right. So, got a projector set up here. Now, as I said, we're always going to be the point on beautiful bright colors. Regardless, if you're using a light gray screen, this is one of the tricks that they use. Let me get me a chair, too. One of the tricks they use when spraying like for your screen paints, they will stick to the environment that plays well for them. Now, they will tell you that our screen paint has the ability to pull up images and fully the environment, even though it's not AR. Any screen is going to pull up a bright color. Any. Whites will pull up even higher. So let's go over here real quick. Let's get, let me see if I got tape here too. Make sure we got all our stuff here. Of course. Tape was in the kitchen. We don't need tape in the kitchen. We need tape up front so we can do this. So we got all our sample sheets over there. Right there on the sofa. Hello. Remember Jerry Seinfeld? Hello. I was watching that earlier today. All right, now this is a white sample sheet right there. Right there, it's a white sample sheet. All white screen, right there, sitting in the middle. All right, now if we did a snowstorm, that white screen is gonna pull up a higher white level than gray, because it's white, it's just basic, it's just gonna be a poor higher white level. Nothing will ever be to beat a white screen when it comes to white levels due to the fact that it is producing a natural white level. Same thing like black. Black screens only want to have the ability to pull up a natural con black contrast level. You get a difference right there. But you're going to get a little bit better greens. And this is just common sense. I hate to say it, but it's true. You're going to get better, better darker colors due to the fact that the gray paint is going to be a little bit darker because it's going to have gray in it. It's a gray paint. So gray is always going to pick up a higher... Um, a higher, um, a higher, um, uh, gray color is going to pick a better contrast. Again, this is what I do. Oh, wait, wait, it's right, it's right, it's right, right. Lost my phone. All right, so first things first, let's pick up all white. We've done this already on black screen. We're going to put an all white screen saver.
Now, I'm going to put an all white screen saver. Now, if you notice, the screen in the middle, which is a white screen, as I said before, is going to pour on an all white screen saver, the highest white level because it is a white screen. And so, this screen is going to ever, ever have the ability between white screens and black screens, there's two different. A black screen is the only screen that has the ability to pour a 100% contrast level, white screen can't do it. Where a white screen is going to have the ability to pull a 100% white level, black screen can't do it. A gray screen, they're caught in limbo, which means they can't pull white and they can't pull black. So they're stuck in between. Now, our technology can pull up a black level, I mean, a white level, of course, a black or white level, higher than any black screen. We've done this demonstration on black paint, black vinyl, black so and so. So we've done this demonstration before, where with gray screens, they can't pull the contrast and they can't pull proper white levels. So just like I said, they're stuck in between. A little bit higher white levels than, yes, than a, um, a black screen, but still, all in all, you're just gonna still lose quality there because it comes so close to a white screen, you're gonna have a problem with a contrast and color and so forth, it's still gonna be plagued with that. So let's put in the color pattern. These are shy away demonstrations that are just not done uh, due to the fact that they won't go near these particular demonstrations because in fear that their screen is going to wash out. Don't, don't trust me when I tell you, it's not doing really well. And when you're in because there's no black technology behind it, it looks pretty good. Now we're going to take a Dark Star 9. This is a really dark screen. This right here is a $3,000 projection screen. I'm going to stick that right here. white screen these are demonstrations like I said that should be done and one of the things like I said I don't like about the high performance screens is the fact that they are uh, they test their screens on white screens you really shouldn't do that because like I said it doesn't make it doesn't give it much of a challenge so let me go in here real quick and let's pull up the white level again There's the white level. We'll pull up a straight blue. There's a straight blue, straight blue, straight blue. Now this is this is blue, literally. This is, I'm showing you a color of solid blue. This is what you're getting. Let's remove our dark star nine. From there, we're showing you solid blue. Take our lights out. See if you have a better chance of producing blue. My neighbors are going to think I'm insane again because the lights are going to be going on and off, on and off, on and off. Like, what the freak is wrong with this guy? So this is solid blue on a projector. It's just what you're really getting from different gray screen paints. There's no contrast in the screen. That right there is black technology. Black technology is going to produce blue. Now, even darker than that, like I said, you're not going to be able to pick up certain colors off a light gray screen. White screens, like I said, a white screen and gray screen aren't that far off, to tell you the truth. Let's put a light gray, green, light green. Now, keep in mind, like I said, 
because it has no contrast, this is the only way you're going to be able to get decent colors. You have to be sitting in the dark. Any light plays a role in the environment, and the screen is going to start to wash out. Pull up red. Reds wash out extremely fast. And usually when you're dealing with reds and blues, reds and blues are the first. Red is oh, one of the colors that fade the fastest in ambient light. A lot of people don't realize, but yeah, reds fade extremely quick. Certain colors will maintain. Certain colors cannot maintain in fully lit environments. They will fade out extremely fast. Got a better chance of seeing it there than you have of seeing it here. Then lights come on, screen's going to wash out on you. Now, let's go back and let's show you the main thing we're looking at here. We're looking at, and this is what we want to check out. We want to check out contrast, because as I said before, any gray screen, it's going to pull color. It's going to definitely pull color. That's not, it's the fact that when it comes to contrast, and you're going to have to have contrast, especially those of you that are hardcore gamers, you're not going to be able to see it at all. And mind, like I said, the projector I have right here is built for gaming. We're just basically just opting out certain things on our playlist, because I do not want to run through this again. So we're going to put up the Skyworth. Skyworth has an OLED demonstration of outer space. It is extremely dark, and that's what we want. So let's see how good white levels are going to, black of contrast is going to pick up on a projector that has a 1600 to 1 contrast in a fully lit environment. Go back again for the athlete. Let's take out the white. We'll take out the white screen because I don't want to discourage from this. You guys can see the white screen kind of complete failure. All the white screens are there. White screens are just, that's why white screens are the cheapest. They're the cheapest when you buy any screen. They are dirt cheap. This is why. Because with this projector, 1600, you're not using the lights on. So we'll go again, see the outer space scene? Astronaut floating in outer space. Let's turn the lights out, see what we get. You have a better chance of pulling a contrast level with your lights out. Can't do the screen with the lights on. That's why I'll show you in these demonstrations. Always done in the dark, and it's never done in full contrast, which means it will never show a demonstration of a star field. Anything with too much of a high black level in that, in that picture quality, they're just not gonna show it at all. They're going to keep to, to, to within the area where the screen is going to be safe at safe levels. They're going to stay with bright, beautiful colors. But those are colors that are going to fade less when the lights are on. And that's not going to be plagued by the contrast. Actually, the ability for the screen to pull contrast. And that's only 1,500 lumens. Remind, you're using 1,500 lumens in a fully lit environment. I want you to check out my environment really quick see how bright it is. We're going to do the same demonstration. The sun pops up. Now look at the difference between, you can see the astronaut's hand, the glove, all the wrinkles in his glove and everything. Right here, completely washed out. You can't pull. It has to have, you have to have contrast. Go over here and let's pull up a um, another demonstration here. Now I've seen this demonstration done on the same projector I had. Well, actually, someone had a projector a little more higher up. Mine was the four thousand, two thousand model. I've seen this demonstration done in a somewhat fully lit environment, but keep in mind in that demonstration. The screen was able to pull up color, which it should, but when you, I showed you in certain areas of that screen, anything that pulled up a black level, a tan.
Now see, lights on. Lights off. I'm okay, actually lights off. So I get that mixed up. That background is supposed to be black. Now, some people feel, they are strongly feel that if you can still see the screen, it's technically ambient light rejection. No, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be seeing an image, a picture, not a faded image, no tan. I was gonna show you about the tan lines, tans all around the screen, faded blues. Take our lights out. So let me in the black level. See how tan it is? It's not supposed to be tan. It's supposed to be black. Sorry about that. That's what I said. It comes to some of these screens like daylight screens and a lot of these high-end screens are supposed to be ambient light rejection. They're kind of throwing around that a little too much. I really do. Me and the fellow, like I said, we're about to sign the contract with. We both discussed that, that they're just throwing around a certification of ambient light rejection. Like when I saw that Paxson screen, I saw the little bit of ambient light they had in contact with the screen saying, look, it's ambient light rejection. Oh, no, that's not ambient light rejection. Let me take your screen outside and see if it's ambient light rejection. Because, like I said, the test should be harder. And I think I should start testing screens outside. They should start testing some of these high expensive screens, not against a white screen. Any screen is going to be the white screen. Any screen. Heck, you can make your own freaking mix, and that would be the white screen. You got to start doing much harder demonstrations. Okay, let's turn the lights on again. Let's do the OLED fish. Now, as I said before, the beta fish from LG, that demonstration, the background is supposed to be jet black. It's supposed to be jet black because it's displaying OLED technology. Where the heck is my remote? I never can find that controller when I need it. If you notice the black screen is pointing at a white level, high as a gray screen with no problem. Except for on our screen, you can actually physically see the fish, which you're supposed to, in a full environment. See how you see all the scales on the fish? That's what contrast comes in. Detail, detail, adding depth to the picture.
we'll bring my have a lens shift capability so we'll bring it down with the lens shift so we're half and half and half now like i said take our lights out You see with the background on the gray screen paint comes out gray. OLED's backgrounds are black, not gray. So that's what I'm showing you. You know, you your chance to see this. Even with your projector, this projector is only 15, 1500, sorry, so 1500 lumens, you're 1500 lumens. And you're still gonna pick up that, imagine you're hitting this with 43, it's 43, that background's gonna glow. This is my fishy fishy. Let me bring up my watch McCombs. Just a minute, make sure I got my vertical. Just a little more. Okay, we got a little half and half going on. Got the lens shift going off. Yeah. Now, so our screens are designed to be ambient light projection. She able to pull that contrast even with the lights on. And that's what a lot of people understand because they got screens out there keep in mind to have ambient light rejection technology and it's supposed to be 0 0.9 and 0 0.8 but like i said even with ambient light rejection you still have to have contrast let's pull up a let me see let me do a demonstration here let's pull up another one we did we just did which was that skyward demonstration Star field. I forgot about the star field. I didn't put everything on but the star field. Let's bring up our star field. Take the black screen out of the way. Let's so remove our black screen. Like I said, that's what I make it. Even if I bring down, and then I said tomorrow, we'll bring down to 20,000 to 1. This is the reason why anytime you watch a demonstration on a gray screen, they're never going to display black levels in a fully lit environment. Screen to wash. Let's bring out the star field. Same reaction we got in the basement, same reaction we got upstairs. It doesn't change. I can stick the screen in any environment. It's still going to react the same way. Let's see what your black levels look like with the lights out, but a projector with a 16,000 to 1 contrast. People are staring at this and they have a gray screen. They're thinking, well, that's a black level right there. No, it isn't. It's not even close to a black level. That's a black, that's a black level. Now you see the difference? So that's our technology right there, leaning against the screen. You think you were seeing a black level when I turned out the lights. A lot of people mistaken that and they think they're black, but you're actually seeing gray. Now the screen we just put up here, which is our technology, is black. Take that away. Put that back up. So even if you have a dedicated theater room set up, you're still not seeing it.
Now, like I said, if our technology wasn't sitting next to the screen, you went home, you painted your screen gray, and then you got this projector I have standing behind me thinking, oh, it has a 16,000 to one contrast. I'm going to pick up perfect black levels, true black levels. Okay, you got all your lights out, nice and dark, and your theater room set up. This is the image that you're getting. Now, like I said, if there's any other gray screen paint mixes out there that feel that they differ from what we're doing in these demonstrations, they can feel free to do the exact same demonstrations. I'll put the ingredients on the bottom, how to make this particular, particular paint. They're all the same. And they can make it themselves and do a side-by-side -side demonstration. Chances are, and i tell you something, I've seen people do sneaky stuff. They're probably going to cheat and probably make those paints darker or whatever. They make it darker, it's even worse because that means doing a contrast demonstration, which is going to backfire on them big time. So we all know the color of what they look like. So anyway, because you have to do that because you have some people that will do all kinds of weird stuff. But anyway, so we're going to do these demonstrations on the contrast levels just to show you the screen can't, the screen paints can't pull contrast. And if you have a projector that's 16,001 in contrast. So some of you, if you own this projector, you're thinking that I am seeing a black level. No, you're actually seeing a gray, a shade of gray. You're not seeing black. You know, this is what you're supposed to be seeing. That's what you're supposed to be seeing. Contrast level, not a shades of gray. All right. In the middle, we have the dark star nine. Move the way. That is a dark star nine. In the middle. Well, let me put the. Well, I'll show you in a minute. That's a dark star nine. Whoops. I forgot. Dark star nines can't stick to those screens. They can't stick because the coating. We have a special coating on nines. Nines, you really you can't stick anything on the nine. They're designed to take a lot of punishment, especially outside. They have a special coating on them. Now all this light in the environment, and as you can see, the black screen is going to maintain contrast. You still can see outer space with no problem. Gray screen's gonna wash out automatically. It doesn't make a difference. Well, like I said, in this demonstration I'm doing right now, anybody, anybody who's developing a gray screen paint mix, feel free to do the exact same demonstration I'm doing here. We have multiple different shades, and you watch me on camera make three different forms of gray screen paint. And in the three different forms, we mark them A, B, and C. We have them all lined up. On the screen, that's why I got the frog tape there showing you each individual one. Three different forms, three different shades. I'll walk right in front of the projector so you can see it's three different shades of screen paint that we're using. Some have more black paint, some have less. Now, like I said, when I watch these demonstrations on these light gray screen paints, one of the things I don't like is the fact they will stick in their comfort zone, which means they will only produce bright, beautiful pictures. If they do do anything with contrast, lights are always out. They will never do a demonstration with this much light on a star field, a black um, screen saver, anything, any form of the black test that we do, uh, due to the fact that their screen paint may fade just like the rest of them. You won't see a difference. And if they're doing that demonstration, they refuse to do this demonstration, then it just shows you that you paid quite a lot of money for everyday house. Keep in mind, each one of these paints I made, I could have easily made it for $30 a gallon at around, well, yeah, around $30 a gallon. No shipping involved because you just go down Home Depot and pick up or Lowe's. Like I said, same reaction. Now, like I said, for anybody who wants to sit there in the video and say, well, Mr. Bird, that's not fair because on your black screens, I need to see the difference in white levels. Man, I've done so many demonstrations, you could choke a horse with them. So I'll put a bunch of links at the bottom. Check it out for yourself. 
you'll be able to see my demonstration of my product versus a black screen. And you can see right the white levels, our screens pulled up a high difference, not a slightly difference, a high difference between showing off skin tones and white levels. And keep in mind, when it comes to white, there are different shades of white. You have your colonial, you have eggshell. So I'm able to produce all those different shades of white on a black screen. I'll show you the difference. There's your star field right there. That's what you're getting. Let me know the last time you've seen a demonstration where someone's showing off a, a gray screen paint and they're showing you the levels of contrast only on those screens. And this is why I feel, and like I said, the fellow we signed the contract with, which has a great deal of pull theater, home projection theater world, and he does a great deal of pull, um, feels the same way that we agree on the same thing, that anything now is passing for ambient light projection. Put a little bit of put one light bulb in a room, ambient light projection, come on, man, seriously. That's why I said when I saw the demonstration, I guess at the awards, or whatever it was, some kind of the showing where they were showing off elite screens and all the screens were sitting in the dark. Every last screen was blocking a window. I'm like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. This is not, and keep in mind, the projectors that we're using were 5,000 project, 5,000 lumen 4K projectors, I guarantee you. Nothing in that room was probably under, under 5,000. Now this right here is an all black mystified screensaver. Background is supposed to be jet black. Let's take the lights all the way out. So now you can somewhat see the screen. And as you can see, the screen is giving off a grayish background. There are shades of gray. Take our black screen. Things are going to much better. Now, let's pull up our 4K fish, which I like to do. And this is all nothing but beautiful colors. Mm. Well, I'm supposed to be relaxing right now. I'm really supposed to be relaxing today. But I decided to do this demonstration. I have to get out of the way because Monday is going to be a crazy day. Monday is a ship out day. So oh, usually Monday on ship out day is freaking nuts. So I try to get as much as I can out of the way. Let's put on a bright, beautiful demonstration of fish. There we go. Bright, beautiful demonstration of fish. The lights down. And this is the reason why when I tell you that when I do these demonstrations, I use bright, bright colors. Bright colors are going to basically make screens look good in a dark environment, even with the lights on. This is what they'll stay close to. Now, doing a demonstration with contrast, they're going to stay away from it as far as they possibly can, because that means their screen is going to fall into the same category as any other screen. It's going to basically fade and wash out. So they have to do this with bright, beautiful colors. I can show you this demonstration of my projector. My projector is 1080p. And I can show you the image of what it's going to look like.
Now, if it was 4K, it would react the same way. If it was 4K, it would re react the same way as anybody else's video. A lot of the reason why you're seeing that detail, it's not the paint giving you that detail. It's a 4K projector giving you that detail. That's what it's giving you. All right. Let's come out of here real quick. I'm going to go over here. Take our frame. I'm going to throw our screen up there. Now, keep in mind, our technology is supposed to be very dark. It's not supposed to have the ability to be able to produce bright colors. Yet, you're watching a screen that's darker, and I mean a lot darker, than the shades of very light screen paint in our screen is maintaining not only a dark and better contrast, better color pop, but it's also blending in to those gray screens sitting right next to it. Let's get it real close to show you how high the white levels are on our technology. Like I said, it's a black screen. So keep in mind, like I said, black screen is producing a high to a screen that's light, that's, that has a higher shade, of, actually it's a higher white level. Let me get a little closer, Let me get a little closer. Get as close as you want to get and I'll show you. So how is that possible? How is it possible you got a screen that's black that's producing a white level so high that it's blending in when it comes to bright, beautiful colors next to a screen that is three times shade or four times shade brighter than it. But yet our screen can pull a black level when these screens can't pull a black level. So keep in mind the technology we develop has both white levels and black levels at the same time. Now, as you're watching this right here, I'm going to move over on this side. Do all the angles so you can see. It's just not an angle. You can see all the way around that our black screen is pulling a white level so high that it's blending in to a light gray screen without a problem. See, this is how we knew, and you can, and for those you want to hate on this when I say this, feel free to. This is why we knew that the demonstration was fake between both parties because they said that our screen came up dark. How is it possible if our screen could come up dark that it's basically sitting next to a screen that's brighter than it and it's pulling up a white level that's high enough to blend? This is how we knew that both of those demonstrations were falsified and there was black paint mixed in our formula. So you explain it to you. You're looking at it right here live. You're looking at two shades of screen. And right in front of my projector, you explain how a screen that's black is pulling up an image that's bright enough to match a gray screen. Pretty interesting. So how is it possible in those videos our screen came up so dark? But yet over here we're showing a, we're showing a perfect being able to match the screen. Look at the color. See, I, I love it when people do dumb stuff, really, really, really dumb stuff. Now it makes them look like a fake. There you go. So we're pulling up a level that high, but yet, like I said, if I go to an all black, I can't do the all black screen service, it would pretty much crush that screen with no problem, crush your screen with no problem. If we go to, let's see. You see a point of a background, point of a easy to pull up. So we can match your gray screen when it comes to bright colors, but also we can pull contrast pull even with a 15 or 16,000 to 1 contrast level on your projector. You couldn't pull it. So think about the technology we have here now. We got a black screen that can pull a, a contrast image. When the gray screen, it's not going to pull anything at all. So if we go in and we do a, and this is what we find, this is what a lot of people, this is where, what, what you can, can't figure out, this is what baffles somebody, can't figure out. I'm going to show you something right here. We're going to pull this right here. 
take this off and we'll go over and we'll grab this demonstration here we got some wildlife we're going to pop up there we go some bright beautiful wildlife nice beautiful bright color as you can see nice beautiful butterfly There's our technology sitting right next to it. There's a lighter gray as it's a little bit more faded. This one has a little bit more contrast to it. We'll take our lights out. So you're watching black screen pull white levels high enough to blend into a light gray screen. We get a light gray screen can pull contrast. Our screen can pull contrast and white levels. Yeah, the sparkly glitter, yeah, that, that's the Christmas glitter. You, like I said, your own risk if you want to basically do your screen that way. Everybody wants contrast. Everybody wants contrast. So everybody wants. They want that OLED design, that OLED look to it. You're not getting that from gray screen. You won't get it. Here is another OLED black demonstration. Look at the rose, look at the flowers, look how they fade, they wash out. Take our lights out, give you a fighting chance. So this is where you have to be at. If you look at the backgrounds, the backgrounds are gray. At least the color has a decent chance of pulling an image. What our technology looks like next to it. This is why I tell you that you have to be in the dark to see these screens. If I put any lights on the environment, there's your screen right there. Now what I'm going to do is, downstairs, I'm going to grab the 43. And we'll see if we can make an improvement with 4,300 lumens. 43, that's a lot of power. 4,300 um, 4, lumens of, of, of power. We'll watch that for a minute. Let's go over This one right here is my Sony projector at 4,300 lumens. Sony projector at 4,300 lumens. That really doesn't mean anything. Black screens can pull the exact same color. This technology with no problem whatsoever. They don't like that part. I'm gonna throw that black screen up there, and that black screen is producing bright colors. They don't like that. That's something they don't enjoy to see. There's some bright colors for you. 
like I said, white levels are always going to be a tad lower when it comes to our technology, when it comes to the screen, but watch this. My screen is more, the LG screens are lighter than our screen, and our screen has the ability to pull up a higher white level. Well, not higher white level, they can blend. I'm going to get up nice and close. There you go. That's about as close as I can get you. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to swap out the big boy and swap out this one right here for that one right there. That's 4,300 lumens. The screen, and keep in mind, the projector we're using has a stick for us. If we do this on a star field, you're just not going to be able to pull up a gray screen on a star field because it has no contrast. Like I said, one of the hardest demonstrations to do for any gray screen is a star field. And they're all going to react the same way. Every last one of them are going to react the same way to a contrast level. No change. So it just shows you that, and out of all the three different mixes that we made, they're all reacting the same when it comes to contrast. Neither one is pulling. All right, so let's take this one out. Remove that one all together. There. And same thing is going to react off the short throw. Same thing is going to act the long throw. It's all going to react the same way. Nothing's going to really change on that one. Swap out our machines. Power that up right away. So now we have the big boy up, 43. Now mine, this projector has a, I think, 3,000 to 1 contrast? Not a lot. We're still going to be the full contrast because it's a black screen. I had to find me a really crappy, I'm looking for a really crappy projector. I mean, it has to be name brand, but I need a crappy one. Crappiest projector you can get. I mean, really, really low, low. I mean, old, I need an old projector. I, I, I keep in mind, I got to find me a projector that's going to cost me under $50. It has to be old. If I can get it for less than $50, that'd be beautiful. Far over. Eh, gotta bring it a little more. All right. Lumens. This is 1080p. Also, 1920 by 1200, a little higher than the Panasonic uh, resolution, and it's a WXGA, which it's just widescreen. It's only a widescreen projector. That's it right there. I didn't grab me a hot cup of tea real quick because I got some brewing, but I just want you to stare at that one for a bit at 4,300 lumens. So you see, they all react the same way. From 4,300, this is 43. The other one was around uh, 1,500 lumens. As you can see, it's still all reacting the same way. Whether if we up the lumen count, it doesn't make a difference. Gray screens just can't. You're still getting the same reaction. So that's not going to be
I have to get myself a little hot tea. I got it this morning. I got up really around eight, eight or nine o'clock on an engine pool right now. That's how you probably feel. But some of you're older and you probably can relate to what I'm saying that as you get older, your body's going to tell you, no, you cannot eat this this late at night because I will mess you up. And that's what I'm going through right now. So I can't have certain sauces late at night because it will mess me up. And sometimes I get a feeling like I'm going to eat this anyway. And then later on, I'm sitting up there like, oh God demonstrations where basically we're just going to keep things strictly we'll come off topic every so once in a while here and there i mean i don't want it to be all technical let's have a little fun and talk about this one one time we had a conversation oh no 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 a couple, a couple of days ago we were from windows to after dark demonstrations remember those in windows 95 or 98 after dark screensavers that had the flying toasters and we were just in there just cracking up just having fun just watching different um you know as summer goes along you get a chance i'm getting a gopro i think i have one here but i can't figure out where it's at I gotta find it because my girlfriend got it for me for my birthday. But I can only get a GoPro, and I'm all GoPro since the screen's gonna be much bigger than us. But if we get a few of those drones, they can record everything that's going on, which is pretty cool. So that's gonna be something else when we buy and purchase in this summer. It's one of those drones that follow you around. You know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm just sitting back here chilling with a cup of hot tea because now I have to drink this because if I don't tomorrow morning, I'm gonna be messed up. Yeah, as you get older, your body will start telling you, nope, no, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, you're not definitely doing this, and you're definitely not doing that. If you do, this is what's going to happen to you. So, yeah, the immortal days are over. All right, let me see. So, 4,300 lumens, we swapped out the projectors. We went from 1,600 to 43. That's a huge freaking jump. And as you can see, with 4,300 lumens, you're still not the image. Let's take our lights out, people. There we are, we got the lights out, and then some of you are looking at this thinking, all right, I see black. I definitely see black. I see the beautiful stars. I see the night sky. Well, the night sky, but the out of space atmosphere. I know, I know. I do talk a lot. I do. I come from a long family of chatty caddies. And I'm thinking about buying a, um, what was it I want? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about buying me a, um, a red tail cockatoo. It will pick up my personality, and my wife does not want two of us in the house. One of us is going to have to go. Chances are it probably will be the bird, since the bird doesn't make money. All right, let me see. All right, so we've got Starfield, 4,300 lumens. My projector right here has a much lower contrast level than the Panasonic. Panasonic has a 16,000 to 1. This one has 3,000 to 1 or 2,000 to 1, so i got to hook that up. So we're going to take our black screen paint. Let's slide that in there real quick. And as you see, even with a huge, tremendous drop in contrast, we just say our projector's at 3,000 to 1, 2,000, 3,000 to 1, either way. But keep in mind, compared to that 16, doesn't make a difference. We're still able to pull up a black level with no problem, where the gray screen is pulling up nothing shady. There you go. So just to show you, if you do make this mix and you paint your screen with it, it doesn't make a difference if you're sitting in the dark. They're not going to pull contrast. It's just not going to pop up. Colors are going to fade. We'll do that demonstration tomorrow with the colors. Let's see what else we got going on here. Let's pull up the G, the fish. Fish, 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 fish. Let's do the mystical screensaver. The background. Well, I think I'm supposed to have an OLED test here. I think test. Oh, black level test also two. Now let's take your screen and screen out of the equation. Let's show you what you got without our technology there. Let's pull up an all-black level test. Three flies. 
flowers, as you can see. Background is supposed to be displaying black. Let's take a light shot to see what happens. The lights out. You think you're seeing black? You're not seeing black. You're actually seeing shades of gray. How beautiful the flower looks. For some of you are thinking that looks great. Nope. That looks in complete fail. That's how it's supposed to look next to black technology in this picture. The background in this demonstration is always supposed to be in black. The tape is out of the equation. Show you what you got. Turn our lights on. The screen is gone. Black technology. The screen remains. This is why I said no matter what we mix, when it comes to great screens, this is what you're going to suffer. And this is 4,300 lumens. Mine this is much more powerful than a projector of 1,500 lumens. It's 43. And the rest count is higher. The rest count on the, um, which of McCall was, um, uh, let's see, it was 1080p, and the one we have right here is 1920 by 1080p. I'm sorry, 1920 by 1200. Keep in mind, the background is supposed to be black. My freaking sample piece. Now you see the difference in this? Our black technology not only pulls up a nice, beautiful, bright color, but you also get detail. See the, all the detail in the flower, all that beautiful detail? Now look at it on this side, washed out. Take the lights up to get the screen a fighting chance. This is why you need black. Black gets color pop, gets detail, color. bright the color is in our technology. Nice, bright, beautiful colors. And then over here, we have a faded image with no contrast whatsoever, no detail no whatsoever. And the image just faded. This is where, this is where people who develop screen, gray screen paints, this is what rattles their heads. This is what they can't figure out. They can't figure out how that black screen is producing a white level and it's not dirty. The image is pulling a more brighter, more vivid, and more detailed image than a gray screen. That's what rattles their brain. This is why we know that when Mr. So and so, so we're not going to give him the glorified for mentioning his name in this video, but we know what we're talking about. This is why when he did that demonstration showing off that black paint. And that image came up so dark with no detail. This is why it looked that way because he was using black paint. I think he texted me the other day and asked me, "Was I God?" And he requested by saying that because of my screen paint. No, I'm not God. I believe in God, and I believe that God basically gives me the ability to be able to do this. So I am not a God. That's that's an insane talk, but whatever. This is why. This is why you got people, some got companies that will go through painstaking, whatever they got to do, but we went through with Black Diamond, with them trying to shut us up, where we went through the same thing with, and some people may think, oh, that's a bunch of bull crap. No, no, we have documents from Black Diamond. Uh, basically, there's a court order given to us to take down any videos or demonstrations that had anything to do with linking our technology side by side to their screen. So we went through that already. Um, and those companies pretty much, they throw their weight around and do it that way. Um, other people that develop cheap screen paints and refuse to push the bar, refuse to really due to the fact that um, we do things on a different level over here. I mean, come on, you gotta be to test your product and fully the environment. You gotta be to show the difference in your product. If you don't do this, 
then pretty much you're going to be in the category just like everybody else. Same old, same old. So like I said, these are easy demonstrations for anyone to do as a great screen. You know, bottom line is that if he's not showing you a difference in the product, then chances are you're spending a lot of money for a paint that you pretty much could have made going to Home Depot or Lowe's. See, the thing about us on our end is the fact that people say, well, I can make your product too. Well, knock yourself out. Feel free to try. See what happens. Because we got company that one company who really didn't want to spend the money for our technology and they wanted to go a cheap route and they painted the screen all black and contacted us a week later because they had wrecked their screen, painted it black, saying we can't get the white levels to pull. What are we doing wrong? Well, what are you asking me for? Like, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. No. Nah. What are we doing wrong? Yeah, can't pull white light. It pulled the contrast, just can't pull the white light. So you have to be to show a diff difference on the difference in your product. Like I said, when they started the rumor by saying that our product was black paint, we did a demonstration with our product versus black paint. Man, we beat it. We beat it. We were able to pull higher white levels. So couldn't use that line anymore. That line was actually uh, debunked. One of my personal favorite was that, oh, he's doing pre-recording. He must be docking. He must be editing the video. So then I started doing all live videos. You can't fake a live video, can you? Oh, or maybe he's, maybe it's the settings in his projector. That demonstration on three different forms of projectors on contrast on white levels versus black house paint. Beat that one too. So what other excuse you have? Bottom line is, and this is it, gray screens and white screens is obsolete. And that's what it is. It's an obsolete product. If you're going to cheat your projector, you know what I mean? I mean, my projector here, this one on the floor, if I bought it brand new, a Sonic, probably would have cost me around $1,300, $1,400 for this projector right here. This one right here, if I bought it brand new, three grand. So $3,000 projector, that I went out and spent all this money for. And some of you are probably doing research right now for a projector. You're going out doing all the research. You're doing going to form sites and asking all these questions about the contrast and the 4K and all this stuff you're going through to make sure you get that perfect. And then you come home and you set it up on a gray screen. And then you go back to the form sites where the color's not doing this and it's not doing that. And I'm changing everything in the setting. Or maybe you got to calibrate your projector. Then you got to go to the painstaking nightmare of calibrating your projector. All the while, there's nothing wrong with your projector, not one darn thing. I got a 720p projector sitting upstairs, short throw, and it's an old projector, and it's producing an amazing picture on a massive size screen. Nothing wrong with that projector. I don't need to go out and buy a brand new projector for what? My projector works perfectly fine upstairs. It's not your projector, in case that this is knockoff. It's your screen. It's your screen that's failing. And you're sitting here watching this demonstration. And you're seeing it's light gray screen paint mix next to our black screen. And yet our screen is pulling a bright, beautiful image with contrast and detail. So it's nothing wrong with your projector. It's your screen that's screwing your projector. That's the sad part about it. It's your screen that's doing it. You calibrate to the sun comes up to the sun comes down. It won't change a thing. You're still going to get a really crappy color. You're just going to have to be sitting in the dark with it. That's all. And so when we take our technology out of the equation, this is what you have at home. Let's go back for a minute, just for a minute. We'll go back for just a minute. And then bring up that, that beautiful flower. There we go. Just gonna pull up. Now see, you're looking at this, you're thinking, okay, background's black. Background is black, background is gray. Now you see it? Your background is gray. I sat there and walked to a friend's house. He has a pretty good projector. 
and he has a great screen. And he's showing me the demonstration of the night sky on his screen. He says, look at it. Look at how deep the blacks are. I said, no, it's not black. You're looking at gray. And he thought I was colorblind. I said, no, no, you're literally looking at a gray screen. That's not a black background. You're seeing gray. So I went back home. I got my sample sheet, which I have here, and I stuck it up on his screen to see that's what it's supposed to look like. So that night, he brought the paint, and he painted over his screen. If I take this down, you would think that all of this behind the flower is black. Because it looks black. But it's not. And you're actually just staring at gray. Now, if you look at the background now, our screen produces up gray. You're seeing gray. You're not seeing black. So when you go home and you well, actually probably some of you are probably already home, fire up your projector. I'll put the link at the bottom. We can do the test that you can actually do the test for yourself. And you would think you're seeing all you do is just take everyday black house paint and do it. We'll show you exactly what you're really seeing because black house paint maybe not be for a white level, but it's still going to put contrast regardless. It's black. If you notice the lights on, the screen maintains the same color. So this background and this demonstration is to be black. I see warmer. Made myself a hot cup of tea, completely forgot about it in this demonstration. And here I am sitting there, I need the hot tea because it settles my stomach. Now, as you're looking at these flower bloom, I want to show you something. We'll talk about something really quick. You know why OLED TVs look so amazing? Because that tube is producing a wonderful lot of colors and everything pop green. If you took an everyday, now for those of you that are old enough, because I'm 51, and you were, if you were born in that era around, I was born in 68. Yeah, back. If you were born in 68 or probably though, you might be older than me. You remember when TVs used to be gray. The tube on a TV was gray. So as time went on, they got darker and they got they got a more sharper edge to them and they became flatter. Like I explained to you before, I used to work for tweeters and one of the TVs I just couldn't stand every time somebody ordered one of the TVs was a Sony Vega. And Vegas were heavy, they were heavy, but they had that square and they had a really dark, dark gray tube to them, which made the images come up like you were actually watching like, um, I don't know, what the heck was that? I just heard something fall downstairs I'll be right back. Okay, okay. Let me try down in the shop downstairs. I heard something crazy, but nothing fell in the shop. But I'm pleased to hold nothing paint around my house because I do have security out here. So if you want to play, we can go military. I don't think we want to go down that road today. Sam trains people. All right, let's go. Uh, so 
as I said before, the, the background and everything. That's why I said OLEDs, man. And I, I, I had to go see it for myself. I had to go see an OLED TV. Beautiful TV. It's beautiful. But like I said, one thing I noticed about the TV is the background is pure black. And that's causes the colors to pop. Now you see right here, imagine this would be a great TV. Back in my day, that's what it would look like. In this era, this would be the black OLED. So you see the difference between you have to have that black background. It makes everything stand out, pushes everything off the screen. Still don't know what that was. That was something that triggered off. Cameras would have basically picked it up. I have, um, well, I installed my own cameras in. My cameras have, a, um, I have a quads put in. I love quad cameras. They're beautiful. You get four cameras in one. And my cameras have a form of like a remote control iris. I actually have face and voice tracking uh, recognition software, which I designed myself. Hmm. So, anything that pops up on the property, snap, snap, snap. Means I got your face and you're downloaded onto a file. I have to have it that way because over here where we're at, my porch is pretty open and it's easy to see packages sitting on my porch. Just the minute they walk, walk into the driveway, see that great big camera staring them in the face. Don't think you want to go in that direction. You know, this is what I'm telling you about. See, that black background is very important because it makes that color stand out. It makes it pop, brings it to life. I'll tell you, two things are going to come out of this. Either people are going to deny it, and eventually it will basically overtake. And if you don't have it, then bottom line is... You'll get crushed by it, as I said before. This is why when we have the contract, it's going to be very easy for us to obtain com um, big company contracts from other companies when they see what this technology does. Because now you can take, all, instead of you replacing all your old white existing projection screens, you can just go to where that technology save you a ton of money. Just upgrade yourself with this stuff. Just paint everything you have. So imagine if we get a contract for a school district that has 40,000 screens that need to be coded. You do the math on that one. Because they already did the demonstration at a church. They had uh, gray screens up there and they coded it with our technology and they really thought they were looking at a TV screen. And the guy had to explain to them that it's not a TV you're looking at. You're actually staring at a, um, you're actually staring at a black screen paint. And then that's when they contacted us and said, hey, look, do you like a contract? And I said, oh, heck yes, I want a contract. I can't tell you who the company is yet, but I will tell you who they are, who they're affiliated with. And it's a very big company. So keep in mind that this technology has to be to produce images in a well commercial environment because majority where this stuff is going to be coded at is going to be either government uh, facilities, um, schools, churches, uh, stores, areas that are going to be using a lot of uh, com high commercial lighting. I felt better. Excuse me. Okay, beautiful aquarium. So I'm not worried about when the screen shows off a lower white level. Not worried about that at all because I do these demonstrations all the time. I do demonstrations putting the other sample sheets against the screen and then I show the screen in white to show you exactly how white the other screens produce a higher white level. But then I switch it over to coloring to see how the screens fade when it comes to color, which I just showed you a few minutes ago here. Because how is a screen that produces a high white level can produce a lower color level. Let's go with my personal favorite, the red rose. Let's do the red rose. Or red flower. I like the red flower.
I know it's for sound. This one had projected death play sound. Literally forgot the sound bar. I want you to close. I want you to see this. Up close, you can see the color. Look at the leaves. How beautiful the leaves, how detailed the leaves are, how much of a realistic look it has to it. Look at the red in the flower, the detail in the flower. Look at the gray screen paint. Now I want you to look at this very closely. Look at the detail. All in it. Look how beautiful that looks. This is what you're supposed to be getting from your projector. Not this. Now, for those of you who feel that the lights need to be out. Let's deal with the lights out. Here's your curiosity right there. There's a question right there. Even with the lights out and 4,300 lumens with a projector of 1920 to 1,200, you're just still not going to get it. You want a closer look? There you go. You want a closer look? There you go. You want even closer? That's lights out with 4,300 lumens. Let's throw our lights on. I'm here trying to think. You know what's funny? I'm gonna tell you something. Real funny, true story. All right, so where my house sits, there's like four, four or five houses across from me across the street, right? All their lights are on right now, where their lights were on. The minute I started doing demonstrations of turning my lights on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, their lights automatically go. I mean, literally all the houses on their side, their lights are completely out because they're thinking, I'm, they really think I'm crazy. Because think about it, you're sitting in your home and you're watching my lights going on and off over and over and over again. You would think two things. Either this brother's having electrical issues or a little bit of a wackadoo. You know what I mean? So those are only two things that pop up. So I have to explain to these things to be a little bit out there all the way. There's something wrong with them. I'm just going to explain to them like, look, okay, here's the dealio. I basically move, design screen paint for movie theater screens and that's what I do. And I have to explain to them we're doing ambient light rejection tests. And that's why lights going on and off, on and off. I don't want them thinking I'm crazy. But then again, if I tell them this, because a lot of people up here have backyards and they have big backyards. So it's, well, you know, first minute I blew up one of these screens in the backyard, can we basically get one of your screens? Of course, they're going to buy it because I'm not giving away free. But the reason why I don't want that is because this is my home. I do business out here. Yes, I do. Coming up and knocking on my door every five minutes to ask me a question. You can call my phone again. You just have them email me. I think that would be better. But some people feel that, hey, look, He's right across the street. Let me just walk on over there and just see what he's doing. I don't want that because I need to have my... Because, man, you're going to meet a whole different side of me. I mean, I'm a nice person, all, but when I'm working and you disrupt me, that is not a good day. It's only a good day for you. I don't like that. Good thing I got a driveway. You can't just walk in on my property. You either have to walk to my house. Because we have, we have a, a buffer zone, which I wanted when we got this place. Unfortunately... I won't be able to get the dogs that I want because I have these particular dogs that I want to get. But actually, when we move from here, I plan to get a much larger house with a lot of room to go from A to B from here to the house. And that will allow me to have these particular dogs I want. Because then there'll be a buffer zone. All right. So, as you can see, colors just wash out and fade on the gray screen paint. That's all to it. I mean, bottom line is, look, I gave you the, the reason why I showed you how to make it because we were making this stuff a long time ago. As I said before, we had a company under Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. A lot of people don't know that. And we developed the same kind of paint you're seeing here, light gray screen paint. We used to make this stuff. And our product was contracted. Like I say, if you don't believe me, um, I'll put a link up there. It's a Facebook page from Europe where actually they set up a everything. We had the commercial backing and everything for this product. And even when I go back and look at those demonstrations, I can see where the product just needed much more improvement. But at that particular time, there is no such thing as a black screen. There were gray screens out there, but not black screens. But anyway, um, this is the reason why we don't we don't support it. And we never will support it um, due to the fact that it's just flawed on so many levels whatsoever. And we feel that because of the black technology now and what we're showing you, it's obsolete. And you want to paint this on your wall, 
knock yourself out. The ingredients is right there for free. You'll get the same reaction as any other gray screen paint. It'll do the same thing. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because we have proof, like I said, this particular individual, we did ask for a personal mix as we wanted. It would have been the same color as the screens we have here. And the reason why those orders were canceled multiple times, even an eBay listing removed, because if we had got that product here, I guarantee you 100%, it would have blended in with one of these paints and it had easily been able to do it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have pulled the higher contrast. We did a star field, every last one of them would have been all period. So that's why that particular individual fought so hard for that product not to land here. But even though he still has this challenge waiting for him due to the fact that if he's going to have to prove us wrong in his theory, in order for to prove us wrong in his theory, he's going to have to make the same screen paint, which we showed you how to make for free. And he is going to have to do the same demonstration and the same amount of lighting on contrast. One reason why we're doing a little color because we're throwing a black screen to show you our screen can produce color right alongside to a gray screen. But he's going to, have to do the same demonstration on contrast at all because the screen's going to wash. So all you would have to do is just do this one demonstration here. That's it, Starfield. That's all. But he's not going to do it. What he's going to do, he's going to, and he's going to come up with little shortcuts. And he's going to do light colors only. Because if he does a star field demonstration with any of the screen paints we just displayed uh, next to his um, light gray screen paint, and he does a star field demonstration for the environment, <coughs> that screen's going to wash. We'll just do one more um, ultra short throw. And I think we're going to do a demonstration outside. We use a 43 outside, plenty of power. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to take a paint roller. I'm just going to coat right down the middle of this screen with our technology and just do, just we'll go right across the side of right across there. Boom, right across the side of our black technology. And we'll do a demonstration and we'll watch it dry outside. We'll do that for tomorrow. And that ends this all together. All right, so I got it upstairs. I got to install my LED lights. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you what we did upstairs real quick so you can see. So some of you know that um, yesterday, I'm tripping over my tea here. Yesterday, whoo, that's me dropping my hand. Let me put this somewhere where it doesn't knock over my projector and damage my stuff. Let's set this up someplace else. I need these screens for tomorrow, and I don't need them damaged. We're all going to do, you know what, we're going to do this, another one tomorrow when we get some sunlight. Hopefully we get some um, some sun. It rained today, so hopefully we get some sun. So yesterday, when I was painting my screen, the giant screen against the wall, I think it was yesterday, right? Um, get some lights on here. Uh, we're doing painting uh, my screen. My, what the freak, dropping stuff. My girlfriend slash wife. Pretty soon it'll be white. It'll be white pretty soon. Probably next year. Next year. But um, she's into extreme. She's doing couponing. So <coughs> she's going to do couponing right now. She got all this for five dollars, five something dollars. I was blown away by it because this is me in a supermarket. I just grab stuff and I just throw it in the cart. When I get there, whatever I pay is whatever I pay. All right. So, um, but she's teaching me some stuff right now. I need to save money myself also. So anyway, so yesterday when painting my screen. Why do I keep dropping that? What the freak is going on with me? Uh, yesterday when painting my screen, I went to pull off some of the frog tape. And sometimes you may run into this problem. Sometimes the paint may not be as secure as you think it is. And some of it may rip off. And you're like, darn it, now I got whatever coating was under my screen. It's showing up and it's giving it a really kind of, uh, I want to say ghetto look to it. But it just, it just looks, yeah, it's a ghetto look to the screen because you have this torn up paint at the bottom. So... All you got to do is go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, take your scraper, scrape off a piece of that paint and take it down there and they can make it for you. So this is the color. I got an odd color in my room. This is the color that's in my room. So what I did was I actually fixed that problem where I had that ugly tape, I mean, ugly, um, uh, where the paint had torn off. 
and I'm gonna show you how I fixed it really quick to get the blend in. So that way, I'll, I'll show you upstairs. So I'm gonna take my stuff upstairs. Wait, let me put this stuff back in the box. This is my keyboard and mouse that I ordered because my keyboard and mouse is pretty grimy, very grimy. And I need to get some tape. I need some tape. Little trick when you're putting up LED lights, um, because this has happened to me a few times, that 3M tape behind the back of the LED lights, it becomes unhinged because those lights get warm and the glue can become unhinged and you can come downstairs to lights all over your house. So a little trick, use a little packing tape, go around it again and just seal it in. It'll never come down. I mean, never. That's what happened when I had the other house and I put that tape up there. And what happened was I came back and there was freaking, um, there was freaking, my, my lights were all over the place. So have you ever had that happen to you and you can't figure out, I'm trying to get this to, to my hand. All right, I'm trying to fight with this a little bit. Um, and I had it happen to me, but what you do is you get a little bit, and am I forgetting something? Do I have the tape under my arm? Yes, I do. What the frick, I always forget something. So you put a little bit of tape there and uh, you could, uh, it stays right up. Because what's gonna happen is lights do get warm and they do heat up. Do make sure that you get lights that have the URL, wherever code, wherever it is. Don't get anything knock off because if you get something knock off, you don't want to burn your house down. You want to get this is me carrying the stand and everything upstairs. Uh, to my room. I gotta set up her computer, her office in her room. So now we're in my room. And if you look at the bottom of my screen, where I had the tape that peeled on. That's very easy to do. Trying to find a place to set everything down. Ugh. All right, and the tape is stuck under my arm. All right, so right here is when I was pulling the tape off, some of the paint from the wall ripped off with the tape. And I left these white ugly spots where the previous paint when it needs the wall was white. So what I did was I went down, like I said, to Lowe's, scraped off some of the paint off with a paint scraper, and they went down and made my paint into the screen. So right, and voila, never happened. There you go. That's how you make that disappear. I used to be a painter. I used to be a painter. I got out of painting because of my back. And it basically rolling the roller up and down, up and down, up and down, up a little bit. So, got out of that feel. I like painting. Painting relaxes me. It does very, very, very relaxing. It's very hard on your back. It is. Back, knees, all that stuff. All right. So, we got a screen over here set up. I'm uh, going to be, I'm just going to turn it on so you can check it out. Uh, keep in mind, this is my projector right here. This is my 720p projector. I said, I'm going to spend a lot of money for a projector. If you're curious what the projector is, it is an M3, uh, sorry, M352WS NEC. It's a DLP. Usually, the reason what caught my eye about this projector, not even because it was short throw, it was an NEC, it was, it is an NEC DLP. Because usually NECs are LCD projectors. They usually don't have them in DLP, unless I'm missing something here, but I've never seen one before. I take that jacket off. It's hotter than a mother. Mother jumper. So, get my projector on. And don't freak out when you get this projector if you happen to buy it. Because the projector, when the indicator comes on, it's red. All right? So, some people think when red comes on, it means bottom line, your lamp may be damaged. No, you have a light there that shows the status of your lamp. If that's blinking red, then it means it's time to change your bulb. Now, the bulb on the lamp life on this projector is around 91 which when it reaches 100 it'll be depleted which i'm not worrying about it because it cost me 44 dollars to replace the lamp in which i already did let's see what we got hooked up we're gonna run the ps4 where's my ps4 i'm gonna run the ps4 today through here i'm missing cables i ordered an extra long optical cable for the xbox yeah check and see where, that, where it's at I'm pretty sure it came today. Mm -hmm. Sorry, people. I'm going to pull out my keyboard and mouse, which I don't need anymore. 
There's my PS4 in all its glory. In all its glory. Oh, 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 oh. So, headlights, I want them hidden. I don't want them out in the open because I don't want them to take anything away from the screen. So, we're going to keep it simple. I'm just going to tape my, my baseboard. That's it. So, from here to here, all that's going to be taped. That's it. Screen. At all, period. So let me show you something or two also. If I have a cord for it, which I don't, I think my cord's downstairs. I did the ceiling too. The ceiling has lights up on the ceiling, but they're actually something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in. Where the frick is the soundboard? Is anything hooked up? So, let's see. Yes. Paintball, yes, yeah, people. Paintball. I was trying to get my girl into paintballing. She will not do it. She does not like it. Do, do, do. Okay. Used to. Back in the day. Away. This. Got my scissors. Set up. Okay, let me see where you go right here. Where is my box of lights? Alright. Probably won't be to see this. Let me bring this down some. There we go. Now you can see me. Now you can see me quite well. I'm going to put the LED lights in today. I guess I'll show you me putting them in. bottom here's our remote control IR conjunction box doo -doo -doo. and power cord right there that night I'm butterfingers today man so butterfingers that's a power cord. Keep in mind the power cord for the back of these is the same kind of power cord. Same thing. I don't think I need all this cord out. So what I'm going to do is just going to connect together. Well, let me get on my knees for this one. I'm standing up while I'm trying to do that, which is a bad idea. All right. There we go. I'm just going to take this part right here. Junction part right here. I'm gonna put that in there. That's it. Now, on your lights, we're going to take out our strip lights. Good. Jesus, man, get it together. Oh, if I was doing bombs a few, so I'd have been by now. Good grief, then dropped like everything today. There's a lead ice right there. I usually just snap them off here. 
I'll snap them off here and there. That's all. Easier for me to get to the roll. All right. So where I mean, where I want mine at? I suggest before you start taping them up, plug them in first, because sometimes you make it duds. So you do want to plug them in first, just to make sure. You'll have like on your lights have see that little line right there, a little arrow right there. You just want to match that, that arrow up with I can see it. You can see it right there. You want to match it up with the arrow right there. It's an arrow right down the corner, right there. It's an arrow. You just want to match them up together. They both gotta to match together. If they don't, they don't light. You can see it right there. That's the female. That's the male. Just gotta plug them up. See, this is the stuff I'm planning to do live on camera. I'm planning to do a lot of stuff like this to show you like how to do it. Because in some of these videos, it's like, look at the lights on the back of my screen, which I've done it a few times. I'm guilty of that. And they won't show you how it's done. Just right and get it to fit in. All right, so let's plug these up. Let's plug these up over here. Make sure we're getting. Let's just the beginning. I want to disconnect this. Just want to sound more. Get done. Woohoo! Yeah, we have light, people. We have light. Ah, oh, man, it's got blinded from the freaking uh. Got blinded from the freaking what you call it, a freaking projector. Good God, they hit me dead in the face. So we have, oh goodness gracious, we have light. All right, so keep it up. So let's see, didn't expect to get hit with all that. I get hit with the projector and the light at the same time. Okay, this is a remote control. Remote control is easy to activate. So when you put your remote control out of your plastic, all right, you have a little tab on it, like so, that activates the lights. going to tape ours to the baseboard because like I said the tape the sticky tape that comes with it eventually will peel off due to the fact that it gets hot warm and it becomes unhinged so you just want to put a little bit of packing tape over top of it like I have here on my desk see on my desk where I have my lead lights here there's packing tape right along there you won't notice it they won't notice it no one will notice it. all right Peel it off. This has got to come off. Good gracious. Sorry. I'm literally getting blinded by. My projector is jacking me up over here.
about sometimes using lead lights is you run into this problem right here all right so i'm going to show you right here there's supposed to be a sticky film that's supposed to pull off here to allow you to stick it sometimes the entire thing peels off and you're left with this right here you don't want to pull off that at all what you want this is supposed to separate it's supposed to be a little tiny piece of tape you're supposed to be using as you rip this off you rip off the sticky part so that's what i'm fighting with right now over and anyway, with some white, uh, what you call them, some white, with some um, some clear packing tape, but I want to make sure I have it secure before I throw that tape across it. So let me come over here. Let's see if we can clip this off. And keep in mind, I paid around for my lights. Got them off of Amazon. I paid to get them for a little more than that, depending on if you get like two sets. Don't you just need one? One is around 16 feet, just to let you know. Yeah, this is going to be my own personal little nightmare here. So it's supposed to separate. There we go. Hold on. Hold on. Now, see right here? I'm going to show you on camera. See right here? Sometimes you'll get where the whole thing tries to peel off. That's not supposed to be so. It's supposed to separate. So you got to get this part to remove. This part. Is the sticky part. Sometimes this whole part will come off all together, so that's what you have to be careful. But don't pull that because you'll remove all the stick it to. That's what you have to be careful about. You have to be very patient with it. All right, so let's begin. Now, for those of you who know this already, all right, fine, I'm good and well, but we have some people who don't know this, and that's why I try not to hide anything from you to show you everything up front. Just in case if you run into that little problem, you think, oh man, this thing doesn't even stick. It's not that, it's just you're actually pulling off the entire row off together. If you see holes in the back of my socks, these are my work socks. <laughs> my work socks. We're just going to go right down the side, like so, all the way around. Now keep in mind, you ain't worrying about this because you're going to go right back over it again with the packing tape.
I'm good. I just want to come in. I'm looking for a cut mark. All right, so apparently these don't have it, so I'm going to have to basically go all the way around with these. Okay. So let me get the packing tape. Put it right on the side. Really? I said I was going to go down. But the minute I put it down, it's just this whatever bird. I think what I want to do before I do all that is let me go and get something really quick. What you should have done. I should have wiped any excess dust I might have had on the wall. Oh, that way that was a nice stick. The stickiness of my Watch my car. Skunks out here, and usually when it's mating season for these jokers, which I don't know why it's mating season now, these stuff is spray all over the place outside, and it stinks. You can smell it. I can literally smell it right now. So now I'm over here. I decided to extend it a little farther over near the corner. So that's from now over in that corner right there. You're gonna hear that quite a lot. That happens all the time. That scared the heebie jeebies out of her. And it scared the heebie jeebies out of her. She didn't know what it was. She came out of the room crying. Poor dear. If we got some extra, might as well try out the room a little bit. Might as well, right? Alright. 
it over. Thank you. So the good thing about this, if I get another set, I can just bridge them. I'll bridge them up. That plastic just makes sure, I mean the uh, tape, packing tape, just to make sure it just stays there. And like I said, that adhesive, I've had people call like, yo, I came back and the adhesive has pretty much unhinged and it's all over the place, the lights are all over the place. Just so you don't have to go through that nightmare, just take a little packing tape like this and just go around your screen, go around your lights. And that will save you the nightmare of coming in and seeing your lights all over the floor. It's not going to take away anything from your lights. Like you're not, it's not going to get any dimmer. It's not take anything away from it. Let me go over areas that it's a little bit more difficult for me to get around the tape. these last little bits here. I think I'm going to attach these up the side of the radiator and I'm going to add more. They're probably going to lead over to the desk. Now if you want to decide to put in chasers, chasers are those lights that do the back and forth display like they chase each other. Those are okay but the problem is they have no dimmers on those lights. And once you turn them on, it's once you turn them on. They are bright as I don't know what. Other than that, they're cool displays. Oh, I put chasers on the floor. Whew, man. Back of Skelly right there. I'm going to bring these all the way up. Put them right here for the next set of lights I put up here. I think I'm going to change some more up here. Okay. Here. So that way you're not completely left in the dark. So in my uh, mess here, here, and then what I did was I put them up here. So that way, if I want to run more LED lights behind the back of this down here and across the baseboard here, which I'm planning to do now, and all around here and here, we're going to try this place out. There's the extension right there. So that's where I left it at. Instead of cutting, because sometimes you can cut the lights. Usually when you get these lights, they will have a little area that shows you where the scissors we can cut and you can trim them there. I didn't see it on these right here. So I was hesitating about cutting these bad boys. If I cut them, they didn't work. I'm like, oh, I have to do this all over again. All right, so let's turn our lights on real quick. As a matter of fact, let's just set everything back up. But then again, I want to be sure So 
here we are. That's my lights. And I'll go up there. Keep in mind, you can dim these if you want. Now, the reason why, with my stuff behind it, it's going to give it a backlit display. It's going to have a little light that's going to come up along here. Nothing's going to interfere close to my screen. So I'm going to interfere with my screen. So, let me go put my stuff back. And I need to bring up a extension cord to tell you the truth because I got some stuff over there that needs to be plugged in. And I don't have any surges over there. So right now, I have to grab myself a extension cord, which I just put all that stuff up. Now, in my demonstrations, we do more than just one thing. So, usually I have a topic in there, but we're always going to jump topic either way. Because there's always so much I want to show you, but I can't show you everything. So, from time to time, yeah, we're going to jump topic. Let me get all this over here for it to put up. I like this particular Triton, the weapon. The movie sucked, by the way. It did. The movie sucked. I don't care anybody said that movie sucked. It sucked. Oh, man, it was so freaking bad. I mean, some of y'all might have loved it, but it sucked. Oh, my goodness. Please. Then the freaking repeated freaking explosions. Or especially that scenery. That scene where he was sitting on the, on the, on the deck. And you see the background and the birds and his hair is blowing like, are you freaking kidding, over glorified freaking Aquaman, or whatever. I don't know, that movie sucked. That was my personal opinion. Of course, my girl wanted to see it for one particular reason only, we all know why. But still, that movie sucked. And especially, the part that almost made me walk out of the movie theater. That's where he's fighting the guy, and the submarine, and the freaking touched his legs, and this freaking... Water is filling up in the freaking in the hall of the, of the submarine, and he turns around, and the guy goes, "What about my father?" And the guy was like, "Something that's like, I'm done. I'm going." Home. So of course, we went on the release date, and of course, we've got those metal. They came with the metal freaking 
bucket for the popcorn because she had to have the collectible additions for it, which we got. And you know what I did with mine? Turned it into a trash can. Literally, it's my trash can next to my desk because the movie was garbage. Don't make another movie, please. Nothing. I mean, it could it could have came out much better. It would have much better if the freaking acting wasn't so freaking so freaking over the top. Come on, let the C be the judge. I'm like we're done here. We're done. I'm finished. I'm going home. But apparently, it was more for her. She wanted to see it, and she thought the movie was freaking amazing. Oh, it's freaking amazing. Really? I could have pulled off the exact same movie with two sock puppets and an empty fish tank. I just didn't like it. I mean, keep in mind when I saw the previews and all, the previews don't mean anything. I saw the previews and I'm thinking, wow, this is going to be pretty good. You know? Don't get me wrong. The guy's an amazing actor. He is. He just in that particular part, man, and it really did him ugly. I don't know what was wrong with that particular story, but that was garbage. I've seen him other stuff. He's pretty good. He's a pretty good actor. But this, that particular role right there, that was garbage. That was garbage. Sorry about that. I mean, they have my butt in your face. Oh, man. Hold on a minute. We're having a little technical difficulties here. Not technical difficulties here, but... Having some, we don't want to stay where we need to stay. Difficulties. But I have to make sure that remote control is present because if it's not present, I can't change the lights at will. I don't mean to have my butt in your face. Sorry about that. Bird, get out of my face. All right, okay, we're there and there. What am I missing here? I'm missing something else. Oh, okay, yeah, give me this. So, you know, be, be warned. We might start doing. If I'm not answering any messages that anyone may be sending me, I do apologize because I'm away from the camera, so I can't really see anything from there. I'm just trying to get all this done. So I can sit down and relax for the day. I just wanted to share this with you today. Show you something. That's all. I'm so glad we had this time together. Do 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 A little bit of a gap there. I like to push up. If you just forward, to play nicely with me. That's what I do. Actually, this right here should be on the floor. That's that soundbar up here. Which I gotta get over to Best Buy. I need to buy me a new soundbar. The soundbar is pretty old. I don't even have the remote control for it. It's like a work soundbar. That's paint splattered all over it. So. I like this. This thing I freaking like. 
I just happened to go into GameStop and they had this clearance sale and I bought it for 20 bucks. Control. Get all this stuff cleaned up. Fallout mug. Never drunk out of this thing at all. Get my trash, my area cleaned up. Okay, now I do this to my keyboard. My keyboard and mouse. I got to set up over here. Well, uh, so, speaking of the movie, there's the bucket right there. I told you. Into a trash can. Movie was garbage. So, yeah. So. And she hates it. Oh, she hates it. She comes and she goes, Oh, you're such a freaking hater. You're such a hater. How dare you use his, his, his movie bucket as a trash can? Movie sucks. It just did. I'm sorry, but it did. I think they should have kept it with the old original Aquaman, when the one I grew up with. I'm not saying anything on race. No. They kept it retro, man. I couldn't care what color the character is. I really don't. Some people get a little too bent out of shape. When they start showing off different races for different characters, they just get all blown out of proportion with it. Not, it's not worth all that effort, people. Big deal. I'm trying to find a face to put everything at. That's why I said next house mine. Oh, I am going to get myself a massive gaming room. Yes. I display all my stuff. I've been in a cramped little spot because keep in mind I don't want my stuff all over the house. You know. That's why I have a place for everything. My living room is supposed to be like a living room. And I'm not to be rude to anybody else, but not like a game shop. I can't stand to be in cluttered, cramped areas. It drives me crazy. Not because I'm, I'm not taught to pull, but I just don't like jump at all. I mean, if you grew up the way I grew up, the way I came up, I grew up military. So my dad was military. My mom was old school. Children were meant to be seen, not heard. That's how I grew up. When I grew up, in my era, where I grew up, you had to have a job by 16 and you were out of the freaking house by 18. And I mean, you were out of the house. You were getting out one way or another. Either my mom was going to call the police on you or you get thrown out in the street. Now, for some of you think that may be a little ruthless. No. The problem is you got kids, man, are baby too much, man. They're baby too much. You should be on your own at 18 unless you're going to college. Going to college is a different story because, you know, you got to spend money on this, that, and the other. And I do know college kids are bad in line that do work and go to school at the same time, but that's how it was when I grew up. You had to be out of the house by 18. That's it. On your own. And don't come back for anything at all. Don't come back because your power got shut off or your cell phone got shut off or you don't have enough money for your rent. You better figure out a way to survive or die. That's how it is. And I'm glad I was raised that way because I don't come back to my mother for me. I don't take no shortcuts. So I was glad I was raised that way. When I was 18, I thought it was kind of ruthless, but now that I'm older, you know what I mean? So anyway. If I have kids, if I ever have kids, when they turn 18, they're getting a freak out. And if you're going to college, you're still going to pay me rent. Well, I'm nothing like this free. All right, people, let's power up our projector. Never talk to you in there. I think I bought my projector. I'm pretty sure I did. I think I bought the heebie-jeebies out of it.
Drive computer mouse, you have served me well. Alright, if my mouse and if my uh, controller in standby, I think they might be in standby. Let me see, or did my controller just die? We should be much brighter than that. There we go. I'm to say, my screen's supposed to be way brighter than that. And yeah, we did bump the heebie jeebies out of my projector. That's why I said that when you basically paint your screen, you want to make sure you give it about an inch away from the physical screen itself, just in case if you bump your projector, which I just did, you can put the screen back in because you have a little bit of forgiveness room. As you paint it right down to the very, in that spot, so you're gonna be about that much out from the physical screen. Which will still keep you in the guidelines of being borderless, but you have a little edge around it. Let me see if the soundboard's coming in. Where's your remote control? Please don't tell me I lost your remote control fast. Here, I need the mouse. Where's the freaking mouse? This freaking keyboard. Oh, right, here we go. Over here trying to get my keyboard to activate. Friend didn't get a dud. Alright, I'm waiting for this to trigger on, which I don't know why my keyboard's not coming on. My mouse is coming on, but my keyboard's not lighting up. So I don't know what's going on with that. Gonna have to put the original one back in for some reason. That's not sourcing. My other one back in. 
There's no reason it doesn't want to boot. I'm probably going to put that one to the same thing. It's going to put that one to boot. Let's see what happens. Let's see what else happens. Lord, 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 Lord. Put my stuff in this place. 